How you doing guys? Dragon Man here. I'm at the Colorado Springs Military Museum. I have 28 rooms in this museum. It's 75,000 square feet and we're gonna teach you a little history about the Nazis. This is the most popular room everybody wants to see. Let me just give you a, a tour of what we have here. Okay over here I have a, a small machine gun bunker. Okay it's got the K98, the MP40, the Lugas, the P38, uh, the MG-42, the MG-34, and Hitler was way ahead of everybody. This is the fastest shooting machine gun in World War II. See those 8 millimeter bullets? They're dated 1938. Let me show you. 1938, if you could zoom in. That machine gun shoots a rate of 12 to 1300 bullets a minute. Hitler was way ahead of everybody. He had the faster shooting machine guns, he had the Bismarck uh, battleship, the biggest battleship, he had the Tiger tanks, he had the V-1, the V-2 flying bomb, uh, they developed the first jet fighter, way ahead of everybody. But Hitler wanted to take over too much, too fast. In 1941 he sent three million soldiers to take over Russia. One million to Stalingrad, one million to Leningrad, and one million to Moscow. In 1942 was the coldest winter on record, 36 below zero, and all his soldiers were actually wearing their summer uniforms. They froze to death, about a million and a half soldiers. He lost half his men. Okay, uh, follow me. I'm just going to go around here and show you a few things here. I'm going to point out the highlights. I have uh, every helmet and uh, every canteen they made from uh, 1914, World War One, right through 1945. World War One and World War II. Over here, these were all Kaiser helmets, over a hundred years old. Here, look at all the uniforms that they uh, had. I don't even think they knew what they were. I'm just going to name a couple of them. Uh, the first one is the artillery sergeant, then we got the Panther, that's the tanker. We got the Luftwaffe, that's the Air Force. We have the infantry uniforms, we have the camouflage uniform, and the general uniform. Okay, take a look at these helmets. Over a hundred years old. These are Kaiser helmets. Look how small the heads were back then. Uh, I mean, you know, a hundred years ago, people were a lot smaller. There was no fast food. Uh, there was no McDonald's. There was no Burger King. There was no uh, pizza. And uh, this is called the Kaiser helmet. Give you an idea. Uh, a helmet like this goes for anywhere for around $2,500 to $3,000. Uh, Nazi stuff is really worth a lot of money. In fact, my World War I room, I actually had to put the mannequins on my jigsaw in my shop to make the uniforms fit. That's how small people were a hundred years ago. Okay, over here, I got uh, every Maltese cross that they uh, made in World War I and World War II. See, that's some collection. Okay, over here, this is a political uniform, just like Hitler used to wear in 1933. See his pictures over here of him wearing a political uniform, just like the one you see. Twenty years ago, I paid six thousand dollars for that uniform. It was made in Berlin, from the hat to the boots. Okay, over here, I'm going to show you something. You'll probably never see another one, another real one, anyway. Uh, I talked to museums all around the country for over 25 years. Most of them heard about it, but nobody I talked to has another one. In 1933, uh, Hitler's bodyguards, the SS, was issued 15 gun belt buckles, right? They shoot three bullets out of the belt buckle. And I have one right here. The one I have, the serial number, is number one. Right here. Check it out. If you zoom in real close, you can see it says SS number one. All engraved, made out of sterling silver. That's worth a lot of money. It actually, uh, you push the lever on the right side, the barrels pop out like a mousetrap, and on the left side is the three firing triggers. They shoot 22 short bullets, and see the cuff band? It says Führer's Headquarters. That's what the SS guy would have had on his left sleeve. That's very, very rare. I mean, I'm a German, way ahead of everybody. Let's say I'm Hitler, right? And uh, all these mannequins were SS guys protecting me, right? Uh, the Allies, the Americans just came. Uh, we have to put our hands up. They take away our K-98s, our MP-40s, our Lugas, our bayonets. Who would ever think that they have a gun belt buckle to shoot their way out? Pretty smart people. I give them that credit. Okay, next to the belt buckle is the wooden bullets, 8 millimeter wooden bullets that they used to practice with. That's very, very rare, too. 
Metal was a big thing in World War II. They don't want to waste any metal. Okay, guys, come around the turn here. This is called the Panther Shroud, like they used in Save Private Ryan. And uh, here's the shells that it fires. I have two live shells over there. See, since this is my personal collection, everything in my museum could work. We have nothing to do with the government. Okay, over here, this is most of the handguns, the broom handles uh, that they used in World War I, World War II. Not only are the guns dated back then, but so is the ammunition next to it. Here's the infantry bicycles, the Red Cross bicycles. Uh, I got souvenir flags where they took these flags off a government building, let's say in Berlin. Uh, each guy in the squad, 8 to 12 people, would sign the flag, and each guy would take a flag home. It's a souvenir flag. I hung this one up because not only does it have the soldier's name on it, but it has the address in America where the soldier lived. These are the shoes they wore. We have the hognail boots, the Luftwaffe boots, the winter boots, the captain's boots, the lieutenant's boots. And see these boots? These were made in the death camps, the concentration camps in Poland. And uh, these actually weigh about seven pounds each. And these were issued to the German soldiers when they were trying to take over uh, Russia in the winter in 1972 to keep warm. I'm always getting more and more stuff. This is all the personal stuff, the letters they wrote home, the cigarettes they smoked. Uh, all the personal stuff is in that showcase. Okay, you come down the aisle here. Uh, this is stuff from the Warsaw Ghetto. Uh, we got a picture of uh, Joseph Mengele. He was the head doctor and did experiments in Auschwitz. He killed tens of thousands of people. And after the war, they could never find him. He got away with it. Okay, check it out. Look at the ice pick from Buchenwald concentration camp. I got that from a collector in Belgium. I wasn't expecting to get the picture. All these armbands are uh, issued to the Jews that had to go to uh, work camps. I have every one of them now. And here's a whole list, a page of what each color and triangle means. This is very, very hard stuff to get. Check out the uh, Holocaust uniforms. I paid over $3,000 for each one. This one from Sobor in uh, Poland, Auschwitz, Buchenwald, Dachau. After the war, all this stuff was burnt, buried. Uh, they, the, the Germans didn't want the world to know what happened, but it was too big of a thing to hide. Okay, guys, let me show you some more interesting stuff here. Okay, over here, this is very, very interesting stuff and very hard to get a hold of. Here's the SS flag and bread basket from Dachau. They used to uh, feed the uh, prisoners bread and water. This is the entrance of Dachau. Work will set you free. This is the last picture taken of Hitler before he went into the bunker in Berlin. He's given the Hitler youth kids iron crosses to protect Berlin. Okay, real fast, I'm going to tell you about this. Okay, this is the choosing ramp in Auschwitz. All the old ladies, all the young kids, the crippled people, the old men, uh, are all on the right side. 80% of the time, uh, that whole line would go to the gas chamber that night. They don't want to be bothered with them. Okay, all the young teenagers and young men on the left side here would uh, go to a, a work camp if they were lucky. Okay, so they'd have a room about this size, and uh, first they'd go into a hot shower. The Germans would tell them uh, they got to take a hot shower and soap up with this soap from Auschwitz that's made out of human fat. See that? So they'd soap up in the hot water, the hot shower, so it opens the pores in your skin so the Zykon B gas could penetrate more easier. So from the shower, they go into another room called the gas chamber, and they were told they're going to get food and fresh clothes. But it was really a gas chamber. Okay, and they gassed all the uh, Jews and uh, Hitler's enemies uh, with the Zykon B gas. Yeah, look at the date on there, 1943. I actually have over two dozen of these cans, and uh, they were never opened. Listen, the Zykon B white pellets are still in here. If this opens and it atomizes with the oxygen to get, uh, and vaporizes and we breathe it, we're dead like in three minutes. See, this is stuff other museums would never allow. I allow everything. I want everything as realistic as we can make it to teach people about history. Okay, so the uh, so the whole crowd from the uh, from the shower just went into the gas chamber. They're all dead like in four or five minutes. They're all laying on the ground. Uh, the Germans aren't going to go in there and pull them out. So what they did is they have these young men and the uh, inmates would call them Jewish rats. 
right? Because they're helping the Germans, but they had to help the Germans or else they'd go into the gas chamber. Okay, I got this from a rabbi. See that? They'd wear these on their, uh, their uniform, see? On the right or left side. And that means they're a Jewish rat. They're helping the, they're helping the Germans. So uh, the Jewish rats would go into the gas chamber. They'd use these claws. I have two of these claws. The serial number on this is 324. Okay, check it out. 324. See that? And uh, they'd go into the room. They're all laying down dead. They'd put this around their wrist or their ankle and squeeze it like that so it would lock. And then they could pull them out and stack them up just like this picture here outside the gas chamber. See that? And after they're stacked up, look at this. They hook, they hit this trigger. See this trigger? And that would release the body. See that? If you were lucky enough to go to a uh, work camp, you would get one of these passport books. I have about 15 of them now. Okay, let me show you this. This is a passport book to go to a factory. Here's the prisoners from the Holocaust at the uh, going to a factory making things for the Germans. Okay, okay. This is a uh, this is a picture of the uh, fella that went to a work camp. If you notice, it's riveted to the paper, so you can't change the picture. Okay, see the approval stamp? See it's round. The approval stamp. It's stamped. Okay, check this out. I have the original stamp. What do you guys think of that? I'm always getting more and more stuff. Okay, guys. So anyway, one more thing I want to tell you. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, Herman Gording. Herman Gording. Uh, he committed suicide with Sinai. Uh, and uh, who was the other guy? Hemler. Hemrich Hemler. He was uh, the top SS guy, right? They both killed themselves with Sinai. Okay, the, what they do is they uh, carry these little capsules. See, and uh, somewhere in that uniform, if they don't want to get captured, tortured. Uh, hey, look at that. I don't know if you could zoom in and see that, but it says SS on it. Could you see that? Okay. Well, anyway, it says SS on there. And uh, here, check this out. So they'd hide this somewhere in their uniform. If they didn't want to live, they kill themselves. Watch this. German cyanide. See that? Look how that, look how that comes out of the uh, container. Okay, I'm going to do it again. It's glass, and you put that in your mouth, you break it, the cyanide would foam up your saliva, and within three to four minutes, you're dead. See, this is SS German World War II cyanide. Okay, guys, if you want to learn a lot more about everything, you come and see me on a Sunday and go through my military museum and you'll really learn a lot. You should bring your kids, tell the kids to bring a notebook and a pen and I'll teach them stuff that they're never going to learn in school. In two and a half hours with me, you guys are going to learn more than you ever knew. Hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah, any questions about my museum, give me a call. It's definitely one of the best in the country. 719-683-2200. Thanks a lot for watching.